Hello everyone, welcome to the Simple DevOps channel and in this video I'm going to show you how to create EC2 instance in AWS. So let's get started and launch our first EC2 instance. As you can see now I am inside my AWS console. So now I'm going to click on services and let's go to compute and let's click on EC2 virtual servers in the cloud. And here I'm going to click on instances on the left page. And here I'm going to click on launch instances. And so here I'm able to launch my first EC2 instance and to do so I need to give name and tags as you can see. So the name is going to be my first instance. And if you want to add more tags you can basically add additional tags and you can add a new tag. But uh, it's good enough to continue with my first instance. So next is we need to choose the base image. So as you can see, application and OS images, which is Amazon machine image. So here, as you can see, uh, we can search our full catalog, including 1000s of application and OS images. But I just want to continue with quick start. So as you can see here, we have Amazon Linux, which is provided by AWS. And that's the one that we are going to continue. And, but you can also choose Mac OS, Ubuntu, Windows, and other operating systems. So let's continue with Amazon Linux. And inside it, we need to choose AMI, so which is Amazon Machine Image. And you can see we are going to continue with Amazon Linux 2023 AMI. But you can also select Amazon Linux 2 AMI, which is, as you can see, it's also free tier eligible. So make sure you need to choose free tier eligible. So let's continue with Amazon Linux 2023 AMI. Next, we need to configure architecture. So you can leave is 64-bit x86. Next is the instance type. So as you can see, by default, it's t2.micro. And it's a free tier eligible. But you can see there are other bunch of instance types, t2.small, t2.medium, and other several instance types are available to you. And most of them are, as you can see, not free tier eligible. So that's why we are going to continue with t2.micro, which is free tier eligible. But you can also click on compare instance types, and here you can compare the several other instance types. So let's continue with t2.micro. So next is Keypeer. As you can see, Keypeer is used to securely connect to our instance. So if you select here, you can proceed without Keypeer, but as you can see, it's not recommended. So we want to create a new Keypeer. And for, so you might be wondering why we need to use, why we need to create a new Keypeer. Basically, we are going to use Keypeer in order to use SSH utility. So let me give the name for this key here. Let's say EC2 tutorial. And the next one is key here type. As you can see, there are two options, RSA and ED25519. So we are going to continue with RSA. The next one is private key file format. As you can see, we have PEM and PPK. So if you are using a Mac or Linux or Windows 10, you can go and continue with PEM. But if you are using the below versions like Windows 7 or 8, you can select PPK. So let's create a K pair. And as you can see, it's now selected, EC tutorial. And as you can see, it's now downloaded to our machine, like local machine. And the next one is network settings. So here, as you can see, we have VPC and we have a subnet and we have auto assign public IP enabled. So here we need to configure firewall security groups. And as you can see, by default, it's a create a security group and it will create a new security group called launch wizard one with the following rules, allowing SSH traffic from anywhere, but we can also allow HTTP traffic from the internet. So let's do that to launch a new web server. So let's continue. Next one is configure storage. So as you can see, by default, it's suggesting us eight gigabytes GP3, but you can click here and choose GP2 or 
IOPS SSD and other options, but it's good to continue with general purpose SSD GP3. But uh, here you can also click advanced. Let me click on this configure storage. Let's click on advanced and let's click on volume. And here I just want to take it into consideration there is a delete on termination and it's by default it's yes. So that means that if we delete this volume, uh, it will be like deleted, okay? So let's go and continue. The next one is advanced details. So here, if you are using for the first time, you can skip all these as a default and let's go to the user data. And this is a, the place where you can run some commands and scripts. So I want just I want to use some basic commands to execute hello world message uh, on my new web server. So for that, let me go to my nodes. And here I have to I have a uh, some code as you can see and I'm going to explain it now let me control C let me do the control C and control V and here as you can see we are basically doing bin bash and we are installing HTTPD and we are basically starting and enabling and here we are executing the simple hello world message from the host name so that's all that's all about it so don't worry about the code it, it's not that important to understand this whole code just the uh, Copy this code in the video description and then just paste it on your user data script here. So let's continue. And on the right, as you can see, we are pretty much done. So as you can see on the right, we have a number of instances. There is one number of instances and you can see the software images. So once you have reviewed again, you can click on launch instance. Basically, it will take about 10 to, I guess, 20 seconds to launch this instance so you can go to below and click on view all instances and if you do a refresh here as you can see click on refresh and it, as you can see the instance state is in pending mode so if you wait a bit if you wait a few seconds you will see it's running now as you can see and make sure you also see the status check is passed uh, or it's available so after some time you will also see the status check but for now, let's click on this checkbox to my first instance. Let's click on that. And here you can see the details of this instance. For example, you can see the instance ID, public IP for address, which we are going to copy in it now. And you can also see the private IP for address. You can see the hostname type and lots of lots of more details about this instance. So now I'm going to basically copy the public IP for address. So because as you remember, we run some commands and scripts to, to, to launch to execute some simple message. So I'm going to copy and paste it in a new tab. But if you click on open address, it will not work. As you can see, it's showing about a blank. So I'm going to open a new tab and paste the command, the, the address and click on enter. And now, as you can see, it's showing me hello world from IP. And you can see that my IP and my region, all right? So here, make sure you are using like HTTP and then column slash slash and make sure it's not HTTPS. It should be HTTP column slash slash and the, the, the IP public IP for address. And if I click on enter, it will work as you can see. So once you create your instance, as you can see, it's now running. And you can see the status check now it's showing me to to check pass it so you can also see the availability zone it's app north is 2c so what i can do now if you you can also stop or you can also terminate this instance so if i don't need any more this instance i have to stop or either delete or terminate this instance because it will charge me a lot if i leave it as it is okay so in order to stop this instance, you can click on this checkbox here on the left and click on instance state and basically click on terminate instance or you can stop the instance. Let's click on stop the instance first and let's see it. As you can see, it's now instance state is in stopping mode. Now I'm going to refresh it basically. And if I go to my 
public IPv4 address and if I refresh it as you can see it's now like infinite load it will not work because we have just stopped the instance but what you can do you can click again this checkbox and click on start instance but we don't want to start the instance again we just want to terminate this instance because we don't need any more and we don't want to AWS charge us a lot so let's click on terminate instance but if you stop the instances AWS will not charge you because your instance is stopped so let's click on terminate instance and let's click on terminate as you can see it's now shutting down so this is how you can create your AWS EC2 instance in AWS Amazon Web Services so if you like the video I will see you in the next lecture see you